where two years ago they said they were, quote, legalizing propaganda by the CIA domestically against the American people. There's the headline, the U.S. repeals propaganda ban, spreads government-made news to Americans. Now Obama has come out with an executive order saying they're going to have psychiatrists and psych warfare experts target us for our own good. Now, the reason they're doing that is they're having to hide it in plain view because it's so illegal. It's still illegal in the Constitution, Bill of Rights, and common sense. I don't care if they pass a law saying child molestation is legal next week. It's still illegal because my heart says so, common sense says so. And their own people don't want to do this, so they're putting it out in the news to try to condition everyone. And if you can, we, we did a news report two years ago. It's actually in the article. Um, Pentagon promises to stop lying because of drudge in that produced piece. We have a whole video from the Pentagon there, but there's a produced piece where I just play clips where they promise to, quote, stop lying by being embedded in every news department in the country. That's what this psych warfare takeover is. I mean, this is the next level. Remember, in Europe, they arrest you if you criticize open borders or if you try to protest anything, basically. There it is, Drudge Forces established Establishment to Admit Culture of Lies. That video ties in to all of this. And it's a big deal. I'm going to go to Jameson in Virginia. And, of course, uh, Eileen in Montana. And then Sue in Michigan uh, here in just a moment. And then also in the next hour, I haven't gotten to most of the clips from the debate yet, but I will do that. Let's hurry on to Jameson in Virginia. Thanks for calling. You're on the air. Hey, how y'all doing? Good. Thank you. Hey, I just wanted to say uh, I really appreciate what you said to Pierce Morgan. Um, I think you said what a lot of governors wanted to say. 1776 will commence again if they come for our firearms. And uh, that's a beautiful rifle you are given. Uh, well, self you know, raffling off. Some uh, domestic terrorists will love that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I think uh, a lot of people need to start looking at Ted Cruz and uh, Rand Paul. They're the only ones who really stand for the Second Amendment. Uh, ben Carson has supported a ban on assault rifles, and so has um, Trump. Yeah, and, uh, and he does look like he has a possum on his head. Um, but I'm going with Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, and people need to get their heads out of their butts. The Second Amendment is under attack daily, and that's the most important thing. If, if they get rid of our firearms, it won't be America anymore. Well, that's their plan, and they're moving to do it, but we're actually winning that fight, and if we win one fight, we win them all. That's why they're so desperate. God bless you. Believe me, they're, they're getting ready to stage or wind up some crazy to have some massacre, and then try to tell us collectively it's our guilt. As if it's our fault that somebody else did something bad. And look, I'm not attacking Trump for looking like he's a orangutan, you know, with weird red blonde hair. Uh, a cross between an orangutan and one of those troll dolls. The reason I say that is he made fun of Rand Paul and said he was goofy looking and ugly. And I really don't think Donald Trump has any talk here. I've never called him ugly. I think he's goofy looking. I don't care what somebody looks like. It's how they act. So if he wants to get in that sandbox, let's talk about it. He looks like a weirdo. He looks Thank like he has. To GCN. He bleached gray hair and then turned it blonde. Today. And he looks like a giant orangutan. That's what's been brought in in the last 24 hours. We've got two hours left in this historic 28-hour broadcast. So I guess we've been on 26 hours. And we've got some of the biggest, if not the biggest, specials ever running right now. Free shipping, 30% off for male vitality. 15% off Survival Shield, Nason i 9 x 2 that will be selling out. We did sell out last night. We learned the truck is on the way with a smaller shipment. But the full shipment's about three weeks out. I'll tell you all about that coming up. The toll-free number to call and make a donation or buy products, and then the profit goes towards the money bomb, is 888-253-3139, 888-253-3139. We're taking phone calls right now. Sue in Michigan, you're on the air. Hi, Alex. Uh, I just wanted to uh, call in about uh, vaccines and humanitarian rights being used to diminish uh, quality of life. And um, I've been researching a story. Uh, it's on global research, uh, water barons and mega banks to take over world's water. 
And this is uh, basically humanitarian water rights are being used, and they were used in Buenos Aires, 1993, where they ushered in um, three times the population and immigration, rushed in uh, water rights. Then they created high inflation, and the corporate sued to recover costs. And then the settlement was done on um, them capturing water rights. And this is why we're set up for QE to create inflation and TPP for the lawsuits to commence. So humanitarian water rights are, you know, this is about meters going on houses, um, on water. Absolutely. I mean, there's some real water problems. There's some real overuse. There's, there's some waste. But all that's tertiary, that side issue, to the admission that the IMF and World Bank, the globalists, call it blue gold. And they are artificially getting control of it worldwide. They're turning it into a commodity. Uh, and they are going to be jacking up prices absolutely massively, uh, putting meters on all your wells. They're even saying England doesn't have enough water yet when it's just full of water, uh, and the EPA is making all the announcements. It's, it's a grab of resources artificially to create scarcity uh, to end the industrial world as we know it. Correct. And uh, the other thing that they were going to do is um – was the, it's the water meters, but then they're going to create these infrastructure banks so they have private property and uh, private profits in water, and then the rest of us. Absolutely, all they're all exempt. They'll be the stewards of the water, and then you will have to pay them whatever they want for it. Right. This is a big story. It goes on about infrastructure banks and um, how they bought off the union. So anybody in the union, uh, you know. Forget the unions. unions yeah, I've seen that global help. research article. Give us the headline again. Uh, it is global research. Um, the exact article is something about water barons, mega banks, uh, and world water. Yeah, we can just search uh, globalresearch.ca and then water banks, world barons, and it will come up. I've seen that article. And that's dead on. I mean, I, uh, I went to big smart growth conferences in Dallas and Austin uh, in 96, 97, 98. And I'd go, you know, this is run by big mega banks to take property. And they'd go, of course it is. Get out of our way. I, I mean, there was no debating it. It was all about how we're going to screw everybody, get invested now. Uh, how we're going to take people's property, ranchers' property, say it's for a golden cheek warbler or a cave bug, turn around 10 years later, take the restrictions off, make billions just in Austin alone, and, you know, have a lot be a million dollars when they took it from the farmer for one cent on the dollar for $500. And the, you did find the headline. There it is. And we'll put it back on screen. Thank you. The new water barons, Wall Street megabanks, are buying up the world's water. Thank you so much, ma'am. Excellent points, Sue. Eileen, James, Mark, Timon, and others. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. I'm Alex Jones on a collision course with the New World Order. Join me now in the epic battle. It's great to be involved in. It's better than being in the middle of the road as a spectator and being run over. This is the animating contest for liberty. Trump saying this is a country where we speak English, not Spanish, and more. But I wanted to get Larry Clayman on for this segment the next, and I really appreciate the constitutional lawyer joining us. We'll be talking to him in a moment about huge developments on his groundbreaking suit against the NSA that's coming up in a moment we are in the final two hours right now we've got an hour and 50 minutes left in this 28 hour live broadcast I just want to say the listeners the supporters the folks that have bought the products the people that have donated at infowars.com forward slash money bomb uh, the people that have supported us over the years our sponsors our AM and FM affiliates uh, the TV affiliates that are now picking us up I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for working with us to promote justice and basic human liberty. And the world is hungry for the truth. And so I'm simply engaging in my responsibility to get the word out and to be a platform for great people like Larry Klayman and Ron Paul and so many others to come on and to promote basic ideas that made this country great. And that's why we're offering free shipping on all products today. It ends at the end of the day. At the end of the show, we're going to end 15% off the high-quality Survival Shield, nascent iodine, 30% off Super Mill Vitality. 
20% off Brain Force, 20% off Silver Bullet, Colloidal Silver, 20% off the Total Body Cleanse, Deep Cleanse, 15% off Secret 12, Methyl Bolomin, Vitamin B12, 15% off Oxy Powder, and so much more. And all the profits from the sales go towards the syndication of the broadcast, go towards the, the TV satellite, go towards reporters and being able to fly them around to cover big events. You see what we've done. You've seen what your support has done. I haven't done a fundraiser in three years because we didn't need the money. Now, because of the economy and because of so many things happening, to be able to launch this next level, we need a million dollars. That sounds like a lot. The satellite and closed captioning alone for a year is $400,000. You add it all together to really be sitting pretty and comfortable and really be able to expand in the face of this global onslaught, two, three million would be great. But a million, we can do it on a Texas shoestring budget. So we're getting close. Infowars.com forward slash money bomb. Call your friends and family. Tell them, if you want to promote the First Amendment, if you want to promote freedom, get behind InfoWars. We don't take your money at gunpoint like the IRS does and give it to NPR or MSNBC. We are listener-supported. We only ask for money every few years. We sell high-quality products and have sponsors. But advertising, internet-wise, and in radio, as everyone knows, is gone. The economy is in a deep recession, going into depression. That's why the Obama administration tells us it's all great. So that's why if you want to see us continue and expand when folks are really ready to hear the truth, now is the time. And I want to thank everybody that has contributed. You're having a huge effect. Now, Larry Klayman is the founder of Judicial Watch. Larry Klayman now has FreedomWatchUSA.org. Larry Klayman is the guy that got the impeachment of Clinton going. Larry Klayman has engaged in hundreds of major coups against tyranny. And he's one of the most demonized, reviled, hated people by the authoritarian left and controlled right wing in this country. And we have the new headline out of the Washington Times, Judge Allows Claimant Suit Against the NSA to Proceed. He won a few years ago the ban on bulk data collection. Now, we saw the headline that a court had overturned that, but did they really? He's a constitutional lawyer. He can walk us through this today. But then I want to get into the election, what he predicted. Uh, I remember 10 years ago, I thought he'd gone a little too far. I'm just admitting when I'm wrong. They wanted to set up a caliphate to invade Europe and the rest of the Middle East and put radical Islam in charge. Now we see that happening. So Larry Klayman, one of the most accurate, smartest guys we've ever interviewed, joins us till the bottom of the hour. So I'm going to try to shut up and let him go over this latest NSA situation and the two other points I raised. But it's a key for everyone to go to freedomwatchusa.org and to spread the word about the website and to support what he's doing. He's also a weekly columnist for WND.com. So, Larry, thank you for joining us. Alex, <clears throat> thank you very much for that nice introduction. I like your comment about the controlled right. That's a great phrase. You mean the establishment? Yes, sir. The establishment right. Yeah. Well, they're so right, they're wrong. In any event, uh, let me tell you what's happened here, Alex. You're absolutely right. Uh, over almost three years ago, we filed a lawsuit against the National Security Agency for getting all of our telephonic metadata, our communications, not just phone calls, but our location. Uh, every aspect of what we do uh, is being monitored by this National Security Agency. And of course, we know that President Obama is the head of, in effect, the National Security Agency. It's an executive branch agency. And that caused us concern. It would have caused us concern even when George W. Bush was doing similar things. And I had filed suit way back when on, on that, too. And we prevailed in the court. We got a very courageous judge named Richard J. Leon of the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia who stuck his neck out. And there are very few judges in this country who will anymore. Mostly they roll over to the established left and the established right. And he entered a preliminary injunction on December 16th, 2013, against the NSA and against everyone that's dealing with it, including Obama. It went up to the appellate court in Washington. And the Justice Department, of course, run by Eric Holder at the time, did everything it could to delay the appeal. Judge Leon deferred to the government. He stayed the preliminary injunction until the appeal would be heard. He anticipated it would be over in about six months. But instead, the appellate court sat on this for two years and issued an opinion uh, several weeks ago saying that, that we hadn't proved standing. Okay, this is what courts use when they want to try to sidestep issues, that I wasn't really injured. 
They didn't rule on the constitutional issues. Judge Leon had made an unequivocal finding 